Antonio Tony Negri, born the 1st of August 1933, is an Italian Marxist sociologist and political philosopher, best known for his co-authorship of Empire and secondarily for his work on Spinoza. Born in Padua, he became a political philosophy professor in his hometown university. Negri founded the Pater Opereo Worker Power Group in 1969 and was a leading member of Autonomia Opereo. As one of the most popular theorists of autonomism, he has published hugely influential books urging revolutionary consciousness. He was accused in the late 1970s of various charges including being the mastermind of the left-wing terrorist organization Red Brigades Brigade Ross or BR, involved in the May 1978 kidnapping of Aldo Moro, two-time Prime Minister of Italy, and leader of the Christian Democrat Party, among others. He was wrongly suspected to have made a threatening phone call on behalf of the BR, but the court was unable to conclusively prove his ties. The question of Negri's complicity with left-wing extremism is a controversial subject. He was indicted on a number of charges, including "...association and insurrection against the state," a charge which was later dropped, and sentenced for involvement in two murders. Negri fled to France where, protected by the Mitterrand Doctrine, he taught at the Paris 8 Vincennes and the College International de Philosophie, along with Jacques Derrida, Michel Foucault and Gilles Deleuze. In 1997, after a plea bargain that reduced his prison time from 30 to 13 years, he returned to Italy to serve the end of his sentence. Many of his most influential books were published while he was behind bars. He now lives in Venice and Paris with his partner, the French philosopher Judith Revel. <laughs> Early years Antonio Negri was born in Padua, Italy in 1933. His father was an active communist, and although the father died when Negri was two years old, his political engagement made Negri familiar with Marxism from an early age. He began his career as a militant in the 1950s with the activist Roman Catholic youth organization Gioventù Italiana di Azioni Cattolica GIAC. Negri became a communist in 1953–54 when he worked at a kibbutz in Israel for a year. The kibbutz was organized according to ideas of Zionist socialism and all the members were Jewish communists. He joined the Italian Socialist Party in 1956 and remained a member until 1963, while at the same time becoming more and more engaged throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s in Marxist movements. He had a quick academic career at the University of Padua and was promoted to full professor at a young age in the field of «Dottrina dello Stato» state theory, a peculiarly Italian field that deals with juridical and constitutional theory. This might have been facilitated by his connections to influential politicians such as Raniero Panzieri and philosopher Norberto Bobbio, strongly engaged with the Socialist Party. In the early 1960s Negri joined the editorial group of Quaderni Rossi, a journal that represented the intellectual rebirth of Marxism in Italy outside the realm of the Communist Party. In 1969, together with Oreste Scalzone and Franco Piperno, Negri was one of the founders of the group Pater Opereo Workers Power and the Operaismo Workerist Communist Movement. Pater Opereo disbanded in 1973 and gave rise to the Autonomia Opereo Organizzata Organized Workers Autonomy movement. Topic: <laughs> Arrest and Flight. On the 16th of March 1978, Aldo Moro, former Italian prime minister and Christian Democrat Party leader, was kidnapped in Rome by the Red Brigades, his five-man bodyguard murdered on the spot of the kidnapping in Rome's Via Fani. While they were holding him, 45 days after the kidnapping, the Red Brigades called his family on the phone, informing Moro's wife of her husband's impending death. Nine days later his body, shot in the head, was found dumped in a city lane. The conversation was recorded, and later broadcast and televised. A number of people who knew Negri and remembered his voice identified him as the probable author of the call, but the claim has been since dismissed. The author of the call was, in fact, Valerio Morucci. On 7 April 1979, at the age of 46, Antonio Negri was arrested for his part in the autonomy movement, along with others Emilio Vesci, Luciano Ferrari Bravo, Mario Dalmaviva, Lauso Zagato, Oreste Scalzone, Pino Nicotri, Elisa Del Re, Carmela Di Rocco, Massimo Tramonti. Sandro Serafini, Guido Bianchini, and others. 
Padova's public prosecutor Pietro Colagero accused them of being involved in the political wing of the Red Brigades, and thus behind left-wing terrorism in Italy. Negri was charged with a number of offences, including leadership of the Red Brigades, masterminding the 1978 kidnapping and murder of the president of the Christian Democratic Party Aldo Moro, and plotting to overthrow the government. At the time, Negri was a political science professor at the University of Padua and visiting lecturer at Paris's École Normale Supérieure. The Italian public was shocked that an academic could be involved in such events. A year later, Negri was exonerated from Aldo Moro's kidnapping after a leader of the BR, having decided to cooperate with the prosecution, testified that Negri had nothing to do with the Red Brigades. The charge of armed insurrection against the state against Negri was dropped at the last moment, and because of this he did not receive the 30-year-plus life sentence requested by the prosecutor, but only 30 years for being the instigator of political activist Carlo Serronio's murder and having morally concurred with the murder of Andrea Lombardini, a carabinier, during a failed bank robbery. His philosopher peers saw little fault with Negri's activities. Michel Foucault commented, Isn't he in jail simply for being an intellectual? French philosophers Félix Guattari and Gilles Deleuze also signed in November 1977 L'Appel des Intellectuels Français contre la Répression en Italie the call of French intellectuals against repression in Italy in protest against Negri's imprisonment and Italian anti-terrorism legislation. In 1983, four years after his arrest and while he was still in prison awaiting trial, Negri was elected to the Italian legislature as a member for the Radical Party. Claiming parliamentary immunity, he was temporarily released and used his freedom to escape to France. There he remained for 14 years, writing and teaching, protected from extradition in virtue of the Mitterrand Doctrine. His refusal to stand trial in Italy was widely criticized by Italian media and by the Italian Radical Party, who had supported his candidacy to Parliament. In France, Negri began teaching at the Paris 8 Vincennes and the Collège International de Philosophie, founded by Jacques Derrida. Although the conditions of his residence in France prevented him from engaging in political activities, he wrote prolifically and was active in a broad coalition of left-wing intellectuals. In 1990 Negri with Jean-Marie Vincent and Denis Berger founded the journal Futur Antérieur. The journal ceased publication in 1998 but was reborn as Multitudes in 2000, with Negri as a member of the International Editorial Board. In 1997, after a plea bargain that reduced his prison time from 30 to 13 years, Negri returned to Italy to serve the end of his sentence. He was released from prison in the spring of 2003, having written some of his most influential works while behind bars. In the late 1980s the Italian president Francesco Cossiga described Antonio Negri as a psychopath who poisoned the minds of an entire generation of Italy's youth. Topic. Political thought and writing Unlike other forms of Marxism, autonomist Marxism emphasizes the ability of the working class to force changes to the organization of the capitalist system independent of the state, trade unions or political parties. Autonomists are less concerned with party political organization than are other Marxists, focusing instead on self-organized action outside of traditional organizational structures. Autonomist Marxism is thus a bottom-up theory, it draws attention to activities that autonomists see as everyday working class resistance to capitalism, for example absenteeism, slow working, and socialization in the workplace. The journal Quaderni Rossi, Red Notebooks, produced between 1961 and 1965, and its successor class Operaea, Working Class produced between 1963 and 1966, were also influential in the development of early autonomism. Both were founded by Antonio Negri and Mario Tronti. Today, Antonio Negri is best known as the co-author, with Michael Hart, of the controversial Marxist-inspired treatise Empire 2000. .In 2009 Negri completed the book Commonwealth, the final in a trilogy that began in 2000 with Empire and continued with Multitude in 2004, co-authored with Michael Hart. Since Commonwealth, he has written multiple notable articles on the Arab Spring and Occupy movements along with other social issues. Topic. Labor of Dionysus, A Critique of the State Form 1994. In this book the authors ask themselves, 
How is it, then, that labor, with all its life-affirming potential, has become the means of capitalist discipline, exploitation, and domination in modern society?" The authors expose and pursue this paradox through a systematic analysis of the role of labor in the processes of capitalist production and in the establishment of capitalist legal and social institutions. Critiquing liberal and socialist notions of labor and institutional reform from a radical democratic perspective, Hart and Negri challenge the state form itself. Topic: <inaudible> Insurgencies, Constituent Power, and the Modern State, 1999. This book written solely by Negri explores the drama of modern revolutions from Machiavelli's Florence and Harrington's England to the American, French, and Russian revolutions and puts forward a new notion of how power and action must be understood if we are to achieve a radically democratic future. <laughs> Empire 2000. In general, the book theorizes an ongoing transition from a modern phenomenon of imperialism, centered around individual nation-states, to an emergent postmodern construct created among ruling powers which the authors call empire, with different forms of warfare. According to Hart and Negri's empire, the rise of empire is the end of national conflict, the enemy. Now, whoever he is, can no longer be ideological or national. The enemy now must be understood as a kind of criminal, as someone who represents a threat not to a political system or a nation but to the law. This is the enemy as a terrorist in the new order that envelops the entire space of civilization, where conflict between nations has been made irrelevant. The enemy is simultaneously banalized. Reduced to an object of routine police repression and absolutized as the enemy, an absolute threat to the ethical order. Empire elaborates a variety of ideas surrounding constitutions, global war, and class. Hence, the empire is constituted by a monarchy the United States and the G8, and international organizations such as NATO, the International Monetary Fund or the World Trade Organization, an oligarchy the multinational corporations and other nation-states and a democracy the various non-government organizations and the United Nations. Part of the book's analysis deals with imagine -ing resistance. But the point of empire is that it, too, is total and that resistance to it can only take the form of negation. The will to be against. The empire is total, but economic inequality persists, and as all identities are wiped out and replaced with a universal one, the identity of the poor persists. Topic. Multitude, War and Democracy in the Age of Empire 2004. Multitude addresses these issues and picks up the thread where empire has left off. In order to do so, Hart and Negri argue, one must first analyze the present configuration of war and its contradictions. This analysis is performed in the first chapter, after which chapters 2 and 3 focus on multitude and democracy, respectively. Multitude is not so much a sequel as it is a reiteration from a new point of view in a new, relatively accessible style that is distinct from the predominantly academic prose style of empire. Multitude remains, the authors insist, despite its ubiquitous subject matter and its almost casual tone, a book of philosophy which aims to shape a conceptual ground for a political process of democratization rather than present an answer to the question what to do, or offer a program for concrete action. Topic. Commonwealth 2009. In this book, the authors introduce the concept of the Republic of Property. What is central for our purposes here is that the concept of property and the defense of property remain the foundation of every modern political constitution. This is the sense in which the Republic, from the great bourgeois revolutions to today, is a Republic of Property. Part 2 of the book deals with the relationship between modernity and anti-modernity and proposes altermodernity. Altermodernity involves not only insertion in the long history of anti-modern struggles but also rupture with any fixed dialectic between modern sovereignty and anti-modern resistance. 
In the passage from antimodernity to altermodernity, just as tradition and identity are transformed, so too resistance takes on a new meaning, dedicated now to the constitution of alternatives. The freedom that forms the base of resistance, as we explained earlier, comes to the fore and constitutes an event to announce a new political project." For Alex Kalinikos in a review, "...what is newest in Commonwealth is its take on the fashionable idea of the common. Hart and Negri mean by this not merely the natural resources that capital seeks to appropriate, but also the languages we create, the social practices we establish, the modes of sociality that define our relationships, which are both the means and the result of biopolitical production. Communism, they argue, is defined by the common, just as capitalism is by the private and socialism which they identify in effect with statism with the public. For David Harvey Negri and Hart, in the search of an altermodernity, Something that is outside the dialectical opposition between modernity and anti-modernity. They need a means of escape. The choice between capitalism and socialism, they suggest, is all wrong. We need to identify something entirely different, communism. Working within a different set of dimensions. Harvey also notes that revolutionary thought, Hart and Negri argue, must find a way to contest capitalism and the republic of property. It should not shun identity politics but instead must work through it and learn from it, because it is the primary vehicle for struggle within and against the republic of property since identity itself is based on property and sovereignty. In the same exchange in art forum between Harvey and Michael Hart and Antonio Negri, Hart and Negri attempt to correct Harvey in a concept that is important within the argument of Commonwealth. As such, they state that, "...we instead define the concept of singularity, contrasting it to the figure of the individual on the one hand and forms of identity on the other, by focusing on three aspects of its relationship to multiplicity, singularity refers externally to a multiplicity of others, is internally divided or multiple, and constitutes a multiplicity over time, that is, a process of becoming." Occupy movements of 2011-2012 in declaration In May 2012 Negri self-published with Michael Hart an electronic pamphlet on the Occupy and Encampment movements of 2011-2012 called Declaration that argues the movement explores new forms of democracy. The introduction was published at Jacobin under the title, Take Up the Baton. He also published an article with Hart in Foreign Affairs in October 2011 stating, the encampment in Lower Manhattan speaks to a failure of representation. Topic. Quotes Prison, with its daily rhythm, with the transfer and the defense, does not leave any time, prison dissolves time, this is the principal form of punishment in a capitalist society. Nothing in my books has any direct organizational relationship. My responsibility is totally as an intellectual who writes and sells books. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 it is indeed necessary to recognize as a fact the emergence of the BR Red Brigades and NAP armed proletariat nuclei as the tip of the iceberg of the movement. This does not require one in any way to transform the recognition into a defense, and this does not in any way deny the grave mistake of the BR line. At one point I defined the BR as a variable of the movement gone crazy. I state again that terrorism can only be fought through an authentic mass political struggle and inside the revolutionary movement. In empire the expansion of capitalism is supposed to be internal rather than external, in that it subsumes not the non-capitalist environment but its own capitalist terrain. That is, that the subsumption is no longer formal but real. Topic. Selected works English. Negri, Antonio. Pipeline, Letters from Prison, translated by Ed Emery. Cambridge, Polity, 2015 Negri, Antonio. Insurgencies, Constituent Power and the Modern State, translated by Morizia Biscogli. Minneapolis, University of Minnesota Press, 1999.
Reprint by University of Minnesota Press, 2009. Michael Hart and Antonio Negri, Commonwealth, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press, 2009. ISBN 978-0-674-03511-9. The Cell DVD of three interviews on captivity with Negri Angela Melitopoulos, ACTAR, 2008. Antonio Negri, The Porcelain Workshop, for a New Grammar of Politics translated by Nora Weddle. California, Semiotext e. 2008. Antonio Negri, Political Descartes, Reason, Ideology and the Bourgeois Project. Translated by Matteo Mandarini and Alberto Toscano. New York, Verso, 2007. Antonio Negri, Negri on Negri, in conversation with Anne Duformentel London, Routledge, 2004. Michael Hart and Antonio Negri, Multitude, War and Democracy in the Age of Empire, New York, Penguin Press, 2004. Antonio Negri, Subversive Spinoza, Un Contemporary Variations, edited by Timothy S. Murphy, translated by Timothy S. Murphy, Michael Hart, Ted Stoles, and Charles T. Wolfe, Manchester, Manchester University Press, 2004. Antonio Negri, Time for Revolution. Translated by Matteo Mandarini. New York, Continuum, 2003. Antonio Negri, The Labor of Job, The Biblical Text as a Parable of Human Labor, Forward, Michael Hart, Translator, Matteo Mandarini, Duke University Press, Begun 1983, 2009. Michael Hart and Antonio Negri, Empire, Harvard University Press, 2000. Hart, Michael and Negri, Antonio. Labor of Dionysus, A Critique of the State Form. Minneapolis, University of Minnesota Press, 1994. Negri, Antonio, The Savage Anomaly, The Power of Spinoza's Metaphysics and Politics, translated by Michael Hart. Minneapolis, University of Minnesota Press, 1991. Antonio Negri, Marx Beyond Marx, Lessons on the Grundrisse, New York, Autonomedia, 1991. Antonio Negri, Revolution Retrieved, Selected Writings on Marx, Keynes, Capitalist Crisis and New Social Subjects, 1967–83, Trans. Ed Emery and John Merrington, London, Red Notes, 1988. ISBN 0-906305-09-8 Antonio Negri, The Politics of Subversion, A Manifesto for the 21st Century, Cambridge, Polity Press, 1989. Felix Guattari and Antonio Negri, Communists Like Us, 1985. Goodbye Mr. Socialism Antonio Negri in Conversation with Raf Valvola Chelsea, Seven Stories Press, 2008. Casarino, Cesare and Negri, Antonio. In Praise of the Common. Minneapolis, University of Minnesota Press, 2009. Declaration, with Michael Hart, 2012. Topic online articles Multitudes Quarterly Journal in French Archives of the Journal Futur Antirieur in French English translations of recent articles by Antonio Negri from Generation Online Hart & Negri 2002, Marx's Mole is Dead in Eurozine between Historic Compromise and Terrorism, Reviewing the Experience of Italy in the 1970s Le Monde Diplomatique, August-September 1998 Towards an Ontological Definition of Multitude article published in the French journal Multitudes. Extract from Negri and Hart's Empire at Marxists.org Take up the baton. Topic films Marx Reloaded, Arte, April 2011. Antonio Negri, A Revolt That Never Ends, ZDF, Arte, 52 Minutes, 2004. 1. Topic see also Paolo Verno Libertarian Marxism Topic References Topic Further reading The Cell DVD of three interviews on captivity with Negri Angela Melitopoulos, ACTAR, 2008. Empire and Imperialism, a critical reading of Michael Hart and Antonio Negri. Atilio Boron, London, Z Books, 2005. Publisher's Announcement Reading Capital Politically, Harry Cleaver, 1979, 2nd ed. 2000. The Philosophy of Antonio Negri, Volume 1, Resistance in Practice, ed. Timothy S. Murphy and Abdul Karim Mustafa. London, Pluto Press, 2005. The Philosophy of Antonio Negri, Volume 2, Revolution in Theory, ed. Timothy S. Murphy and Abdul Karim Mustafa. London, Pluto Press, 2007. Dossier on Empire, a special issue of Rethinking Marxism, ed. Abdul Karim Mustafa. London, T&F, Routledge, 2002. Autonomia, Post-Political Politics, ed. Silver Lotringer and Christian Mirazi. 
New York, Semiotext E, 1980, 2007. Includes transcripts of Negri's exchanges with his accusers during his trial, ISBN 1-58435-053-9, ISBN 978-1-58435-053-8. Available online at Semiotext e Antonio Negri Illustrated, Interview in Venice, Claudio Caglia, Red Quill Books, 2011. ISBN 978-1-926958-13-2 Publishers Announcement Topic. External links Media related to Antonio Negri at Wikimedia Commons Quotations related to Michael Hart and Antonio Negri at Wikiquote